It was a high school reunion of historical proportions, sitting in what used to be Cleburne's African American High School where its oldest remaining alumni. These graduates of Booker T. Washington High School, which closed in 1965 when segregation ended, were brought together by Cleburne officials. They laughed and hugged each other as they remembered the good times from their teenage years. The graduates gathered in the gym of their former high school in 2015, now a part of the Booker T. Washington Recreation Center, to make sure their place in history is not forgotten. The purpose was to hear their stories and take their pictures for an exhibit which sits at the entrance of the Recreation Center in Cleburne. City Councilman John Warren himself, a 1958 Booker T. Washington graduate, said he felt compelled to organize the event to honor the graduates. Well, what we have what, what we call the Booker T. Washington Ex-Student Association. And um, it's primarily uh, made up of those students who are in the uh, immediate area, in the Metroplex area. There are not very many of us left, but on the other hand, we came, we come together, uh, and we try to have some kind of uh, uh, program or something like that every two years, and trying to get all the all of the students to come back to the area and have some kind of program all the two years, every every two years, and so. Uh, what we did this last time in September, uh, because the school closed in 1965, and that was 50 years ago, then we named this particular uh, uh, ex-student association uh, uh, reunion our 50th year anniversary. And so it was well attended. As a matter of fact, it was better attended than any I've ever uh, attended. And we had students from just everywhere. Of course, they live everywhere in the United States, and a lot of them came back and was with us, and we had a good time. We Washington was Cleburne's only high school for black students. It opened in 1904 and literally was on the other side of the tracks from the white part of town. The school closed in 1965 when the schools were desegregated, and African-American students went to Cleburne High School. The building failed into disrepair until the city bought the property and built the recreation center on the site. The gym was the only portion of the building to survive. Uh, we had some great athletes here, baseball, football, and basketball. Myself, I played basketball, and I was considered uh, one of the top players here. And uh, I, I don't like to brag on myself. I really don't. <laughs> But I, one of the things that I wish we had had the opportunity to have was the video where we could have, you know, videotaped our games. And then you would have been able to see that Michael Jordan wasn't, he's not all of it, you know. <laughs> I was doing some of that before he was born, you know. And uh, I don't want to brag, but it's true, you know. I let somebody else talk about that. But then on the other hand, you know, I could name several guys, you know, I mean, that was just fantastic. And then we had about four or five guys who went up to the minor leagues in the Baseball Association and uh, played for a little while. But uh, the, uh, the, the, the racism was so, so, uh, well, it was just something that was there, you know. It it it, it erased their opportunity, you know. Um, they they were good enough to play, you know, but for 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 various reasons they didn't make you know go all the way up to the big leagues, you know. But we had some guys that could have done that. Yeah. Back here, we 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 came. We came along in an era where it was assumed that because of the location of this place, who it was involved in the educational process was inferior to any other uh, uh, educational system. But <laughs> we, were, we were superior and uh, we got a good education and we had the best teachers ever because teaching was the only job they could get. And uh, 
I tell you what, it, it's just a, a it's just a great feeling to have been involved in this part of of the uh, educational system. When asked about his thoughts on segregation, Councilman Warren chose not to dwell and wanted to remember the good times and experience that he had at Booker T. Some of the memories here on campus, oh, I tell you what, it's it's uh, <laughs> it's it's really a, a great memory. Um, uh, we we played hooky every now and then, and uh, went down to the park here and on Carver Park, and there was a area there was pretty clean down there, the Buffalo Creek, and we called that Grapey, and we'd go down there and swim, and uh, all of us would be naked in that place, you know, and just swimming and having a good time. <laughs> States and school districts did little to reduce segregation, and schools remained almost completely segregated until 1968. The segregation efforts reached their peak in the late 1960s and early 1970s, a period in which the South's transitioned from complete segregation to being the nation's most integrated region. It's true that uh, we were discriminated against. We couldn't go to the theaters and things like that. And if we did go to the theater, we had to go and sit. We had to sit in the balcony. Um, the bus station right across the street from the city hall there, uh, you went in there and you paid for your fare, and the waiting room was in the area where the mechanic worked on the buses. You had to step over the grease and grime. There was three or four seats there made to sit. And then when the bus got ready to leave, you had to sit on that at the back of the bus, you know. And, um, uh, but here in our environment, we had, we had, uh, there were black businessmen, uh, they had stores, they had uh, cafe and uh, et cetera. And so we, we really didn't, in comparison now, I think in a way that was good for us, you know, and because it gave us a sense of presence within ourselves. You know, we didn't need any help from anybody else to get where we are now. And... Um, it was a good environment growing up, you know. And each year when school started, school started then in September, right after Labor Day, the principal here at the high school would get several of us, put us in the car, and we'd go over to Cleveland High, to Cleveland high School and get our books. Those books were the books that the white students had used Oftentimes, the pages were torn out, missing. Uh, oftentimes, there were books where that they were st several years old and uh, several students had used them and there was no place for us to put our name in them. We just had to write our name in it somewhere, you know. But even at that, having the teachers that we had, you know, circumvented that problem. And uh, I can remember when... Uh, we wanted typing, and so uh, the principal, he, uh, he uh, uh, made an appeal to the school board to, that we needed typing over here. So what they did, they gave us the typewriters that they had been using for years. They sent them down to Hallman's Printing Company. I remember it. Hallman's Printing Company is right there where Bennett's uh, printing company is right now. That was Hallman's. They sent all the typewriters down there. They cleaned them and fixed them up real nice. They brought them over here and gave them to us. They bought, bought the students over there new typewriters. You know. And so th those are some of the things that was going on. But even at that, we learned how to type. According to City Councilman John Warren, he estimates there's only 30 living who graduated before 1958. We've come a long way since 1904 in bringing our city together, but we still have a long ways to go, said Mayor Scott Kane. The mayor is hoping that this reunion will help us all remember that. This thing is going where it really needs to be. Uh, our partici participation in every endeavor, it's going to happen, you know. And the reason it's going to happen is because the whole universe is built on truth, you know. 
And uh, it's just like Dr. King said, the arc of the universe is long, but it bends toward justice. You, know, you cannot uh, keep God's will from happening. And where we are now is a result of that.